Let's spend a few minutes thinking about how changes in supply can affect the level of consumer surplus. Uh, we'll take the example of a farmer whose costs of production go down. In other words, that causes an outward shift of their supply curve. Consumer surplus, a quick reminder, is the difference between the price that consumers are willing and able to pay for a product and the total amount that they actually pay. The total amount, of course, being the price times the quantity. And we show the amount of consumer surplus by the area underneath the demand curve and above the market price, assuming that the price charged is the same for all units consumed. So let's take the example of a farmer that's producing avocados, and here's the initial equilibrium. Uh, the price is B and the quantity is D, and so the consumer surplus is the area A, B, C. Now let's assume that there's a fall in input cost. It could be the cost of fertiliser, for example. It could be the cost of animal feed or whatever it is, or the costs of production go down. Supply shifts outwards from S1 to S2. And that means, of course, the lower cost of production will feed into a lower market price. That falls from B to E. And demand, of course, expands. We move along the demand curve down uh, from uh, down D to F, or from C down to G. So lower prices cause a fall in, uh, an expansion, sorry, in the level of demand. And the quantity bought and sold has gone up from D to F. Well, following the increase in supply, the price falls to E. What is the new level of consumer surplus? Well, consumer surplus now is the area, again, above the price, which is E, and below the demand curve. So the consumer surplus is the area A, E, G. And you can see that A, E, G is bigger than A, B, C. There has been an improvement or a gain in consumer welfare. That gain is shown by the trapezium B, C, G, E. And therefore, uh, an increase in supply causes an increase in consumer surplus.